visions. The Illustrated Man by Ray Bradbury. Dramatized by Brian Sibley. With Ian Glenn as the Illustrated Man and Jamie Parker as the youth. Where I can find a job. What the? <sighs> hey. <clears throat> you startled me. Where the hell did you spring from? I asked if you know where I can find a job. Uh, no. Oh, no, I'm afraid not. Yeah. I haven't had a job that lasted in 40 years. Well, I haven't started the struggle yet. Just out of college. Decided to take myself off on a walking tour in the desert. 40 years. You, uh, you far to go tonight? Same as any other. Well, it'll be dark soon, so if you want a bit of company, you know, I have some extra food. Just uh, pork and beans, but you're very welcome. <sighs> I'll be sorry you asked me to stay. Oh, <laughs> what's that? Here, coffee. Everyone's always sorry. Sooner or later. Yeah. I'm forever looking for a job I ain't gonna find. Eat. You got a job? Keep it a week. Maybe ten days. Well, something happens and they fire me. I should be making money hand over fist. Doing what? Carnivals. I'm the best goddamn attraction anyone ever paid a few good bucks to see. I haven't been to a carnival in years. Well, there ain't a single one in the whole damn country now to touch me with a ten-foot pole. Jeez. It's as hot as Hades. So why the hell are you all done up like that? No wonder you're sweating. You want to know? Hey. Uh, I guess, yeah. Look here. In the palm of my hand. Uh, a rose. Freshly cut. Drops of dew. Nestling among soft pink petals. That's... That's beautiful. But not real. The best tattoo I've ever seen. It's an illustration, boy. Just one of many. That's why I keep the shirt buttoned. I slip my fingers inside here, and what do I feel? Hair, skin, chest bone, underneath, but not them. You can't feel them, but they're there. The crowds. The what? Hordes, gangs, mobs. I'm always massing, thronging. Whenever I can, I get away from everyone. I strip off and walk in the sun for hours on the hottest days, baking, roasting. Hoping the sun will cook them off. Hoping my sweat will wash them away, but at sundown, they're still there. Here. Look. <sighs> so, what do you make of my illustrations? Uh, incredible. Yeah. So, tell me what you see, boy. Oh, um, yellow meadows, blue rivers, purple mountains. Go on. Uh, shadowy forests, sun-bleached velts, birds and animals, your chest, all stars and planets. My own personal Christ-forsaken Milky Way. <laughs> Rockets, spacemen. They're fantastic. Oh, yeah. These aren't the work of some cheap jack carnival tattooist with three colors and whiskey on his breath. These are the works of a genius. Miniature masterpieces. Michelangelo, Titians, Van Goghs, and El Grecos. Burning with three-dimensional color. Vibrant with life. A walking art gallery. Yep. Everyone wants to see the pictures, yet nobody wants to see them. Why? Because these illustrations, 
predict the future. Oh, oh, sure. Oh, in sunlight, it's all right. Yes, I could keep a carnival job easy by day. But the moment night falls, well, you'll see. <laughs> see what? The pictures change. Change? Move. When the sun sets and the moon begins to rise, the pictures move. Watch. What the hell? <laughs> I, I don't know what you're doing. And what's more, I don't want to know. I need to get this stuff cleared away. Trick of the eye, effect of the firelight. No, this is how it is every night. Every twitch of the flesh, the tiny mouths flicker. The tiny green and gold eyes wink. The tiny pink hands gesture. Hiding in forests of hair, lurking among constellations of freckles, peering from armpit caverns, diamond eyes of glitter. Tell me for a fool. It's nothing more than cheap carnival crap. And the voices? What voices? You stop that racket and listen. The nursery captures the telepathic emanations of the children's minds. The children's We've minds. brought civilization, We've brought down, civilization down, 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 down The city has waited 20,000 years. Travel in time, in the children think lions. There are lions. There's nothing worth saving. In the middle of the 20,000th year, a rocket appears. See Lincoln Schultz. See the Wright brothers fly. They think zebras. There are zebras. Well, yes. Yes, okay. I hear them. Some. 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 The earth is over and done with. The city ceases its waiting. Kubla Khan, Kubla Moses, Khan, and the Red Sea. The Red sea. They, think they think death. There is death. death. So many voices. Distant sea voices. Each with a future to reveal. Maybe the near future or some far future beyond our comprehension. There's no sequence, no chronology. Just glimpses of time to come. It's been a great evening. Sure has. I've never seen you so relaxed and happy. Well, that's for certain. Now, here's a story. Right here. On my upper arm. You see them? Two men walking down a street. The glow of neon lights. Ordinary enough, you might think. Every night, the world over, men walk the streets of cities. But listen. Why the hell is it so difficult to get a hover cab in New York these days? Uh, Progress? I mean, we should take the monorail. Oh, there'll be a cab in a minute. Anyway, why so early? Oh, let's have another drink. Uh, better not. Your first night out on your own without Gail in years, and you want to go home at 10 o'clock? <sighs> nerves, I guess. Oh, come on. Jed Brailing, nerves. Why push my luck, Sam? Look, old college buddy, you might as well come clean. How'd you manage it? The whole world knows the Brailings are inseparable, the best couture house in the U.S., and you never see one without the other. Yeah, right. Well, you know the truth of it. Yeah. One year of love, ten years of hate, mercifully softened by success. Achieved with my talent, but her money. Ah. So no chance of freedom without destroying the brand and trading fame and fortune for personal penury. I wish my life was that complicated. Now, how is Nettie? Same. Worse. You know, it's hard to tell when you're living with a 24-7. I mean, you, you'll think this is a terrible thing to say, but maybe I'm just wishing she was worse so that I'd know that one day it'll end before I'm too old to have anything left of the rest of my life. You know, Sam, there comes a time if life doesn't start changing for the better, you gotta help it along. <laughs> but just what are you up to, Jed? Hmm? See this? Uh-huh. Well, it looks like a ticket. Exactly what it is. First class ticket to Paris on Thursday's rocket. How'd you manage that? Champs comes your way, you grab it. Uh-huh. Well, why Paris? Possible deal. Big money if I pull it off. Enough to buy out Gail, relaunch the brand, hit Europe. Ah. Uh, and Gail's just gonna sit back and let you head off to Le Gay Paris and demolish the house of Burling? She won't know I'm gone. Oh, yeah, sure. There's a cab. Taxi? About time. I'll be back in a month with a done deal, and no one the wiser except you. Well, how come? Hop in. We'll stop off at the apartment. I'll show you. Okay. Okay. So 
No time to spill the beans. What's the big secret? Do what I tell you, but listen to me. Mm -hmm. Under no circumstances react. To what? I want you to look up at the window. Watch for the light to come on and tell me what you see. Uh-huh. There. What the... Shh, keep your voice down. Well? Oh, it's not possible. You saw it? Yeah, someone, for someone, yeah, just for a second, but... I, I thought that it was... That it was me? But... Yes, but that's... That's exactly who it was. You can meet him in person. He's coming down. Hello, Brailing. Hello, Mr. Brailing. Brailing, say hello to my friend, Mr. Smith. Hello, Mr. Smith. Nice to make your acquaintance. <gasps> you have a twin brother? My God, I never knew. Way off beam, Sam. Then... He's called Brailing 2. Put your ear to his chest. What? Do as I tell you. Bend close and listen. Go on. No. No. <laughs> yes. Where did you get him? Isn't he brilliantly made? Even the flesh is warm to the touch. Check for yourself. Oh, that's incredible. Where did you tell him, Brailing too? Certainly, Mr. Brailing. I am a product of Marionettes Incorporated. Duplicate self or friends. Latest humanoid 2090. Guaranteed against all physical wear. Well, I'll be damned. Available from $24,000 to our $50,000 deluxe model. Our motto, no strings attached. So how long has this gone on? I've had him a month. I, I keep him in a tool chest in my basement studio. Obviously, Gail never goes down there, and even if she did, it's locked, and I'm the one with the key code. Tonight, I said I needed to pop out to get a cigar. And... Mr. Brailing came down to the studio, took me out of the tool chest, and sent me up to sit with his wife while he came to meet you. That's staggering. I, he even smells like you. The Bond Street aftershave and the Melancrino cigars? He is me, to the last hairiest detail. So you see, thanks to Brailing too, I've been at home with Gail all evening. Mrs. Brailing is very charming. And thanks to him again, I shall be home with her for the next month, while another man, looking amazingly like me, uh -huh. will be in Paris salvaging my future. And when I return, triumphant from my continental trip, back in the tool chest he'll go. It, it, it feels weird talking about him like that while he's standing there. <laughs> Sam, he's what they used to call a robot. Whatever he looks like on the outside, it's all just electronics on the inside. He's not real. Are you brailing too? I'm a Marionettes Incorporated 2090 humanoid model. And will he function for a month? For six months, if necessary. And he's built to do everything. Eat, sleep, perspire, everything natural as natural is. Including taking good care of my wife. Isn't that right? Oh, yes, Mr. Brailing. I've grown rather fond of her. How long has Marionettes, Inc. been in business? Oh, secretly for two years. Two years and five months, Mr. Brailing. Uh -huh. So uh, how do you go about it? Shall I explain, Mr. Brailing? <laughs> Why not, Brailing, too? You see, Sam? He's pretty smart for a robot. Thank you, Mr. Brailing. It's a simple process, Mr. Smith. Clients have a mold made of their body and a color index check of their eyes, skin, and hair, after which they should expect to wait for two months until their model is completed. At all times, clients are pledged to secrecy. Oh, I'm not surprised. Is this legal? Who cares? The answer to your question, Mr. Smith, is that whilst an act is pending in Congress to legalize Marionettes Incorporated, it is still currently a felony to be caught using... But is it right? Morally, I mean? I couldn't say, Mr. Smith. And I don't give a damn. You know, Sam, one of these could change your life forever. Yeah, I guess it could. Well, it'd give me a respite once in a while. I mean, not all the time, but just now and again. But the cost... What price freedom, Sam? I'm home, Nettie. Sorry I'm late. Be up to you in a minute. Just gonna fix myself a drink. Oh, God. I hardly dare to think. There's at least $40,000 in the joint account. I can just slip out 
24,000. Please enter your eight-digit account number. Nettie never looks at the accounts. Please enter your password. And if she did, well, I'd just say it was a little business venture. You are connected to your personal interactive bank. What service would you like today? I want to check a balance. The balance on your joint account is $15,000. What? There's at least twice that amount in there? Would you like me to display a schedule of deposits and withdrawals? Yes, goddammit. What the hell's going on? All recent transactions are now showing. That's impossible. Nettie? Nettie? Nettie! Nettie? Nettie, wake up. Wake up. What have you done with it, hmm? What have you done with the money? You don't go anywhere, you don't need anything, you're a goddamn invalid. So where's it gone, huh? Wake up, damn you, and tell me what you've done with all that money. Nettie, Nettie, can you hear me? Oh, God, no, not again, no. Not another overdose. Oh, Nettie, yes. Nettie, for pity's sake, it's all right, it's all right. Doesn't matter about the money. Just wake up, Ned, please. What's that? Oh no. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Nettie. No. Oh, no. Nettie. I like Mr. Smith. He seems very nice. Yeah. And now, thanks to Marionette's ink, he'll be happy too. Anyway, it's the tool chest for you now, B2. That's something I need to talk to you about. What? I don't like it down here. And I don't like that tool chest. Okay, uh, I'll try and fix up something a bit more comfortable. Hmm. Marionettes are made to move, not lie in a box. How would you like to lie in a box most of the time? <laughs> well... You wouldn't like it at all. I keep running. There's no way to shut me off. I'm perfectly alive, and I have... I have feelings. It'll only be a few days now. I'll be off to Paris, and you won't have to stay in the box. You can live upstairs. And when you come back from having a good time, back in the box I go. They didn't tell me at Marionette's Inc. that I get a difficult specimen. That's not a very nice thing to say. Yeah, I, I, just, I just meant... <laughs> what did you say to Mr. Smith? Whatever he looks like on the outside, it's all just electronics on the inside? Well, there's a lot that you and Marionettes Incorporated don't know about us. The thing is, I hate the idea of you flying off to Paris while we're stuck here. Yeah, th this, is, this is an important trip. A business. My future. What about my future? Have you thought about that? No. <laughs> well, why should I? And another thing. Your wife. Uh, what about her? Like I said earlier... I've grown quite fond of her. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying your employment. <laughs> I'm afraid you don't quite understand, Brayling. I think I'm in love with her. <laughs> You're what? And I've been thinking, Brayling, how nice it must be in Paris, and how I'll never get there. And I've thought about your wife, Gail. And you know what? I think we could be very happy. <laughs> okay, well, that's... that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> I just need to run upstairs. Just for a moment, I'll be, I'll be right back. You're going to contact Marionettes Incorporated, aren't you? No. No, 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 no. Going to tell them to come and get me? No, no, no nothing like that. No. Hey, get, get, get your hands off me! It's no good struggling. I'm stronger than you. <clears throat> Did my wife put you up to this? Don't be silly, Grayling. <clears throat> she knows, doesn't she? She's found out what I was planning. Persuaded you to try and stop me, is that it? Well, you'll never know, because I'm going to put you in the tool chest, lock it, and lose the key. And then I'm going to buy another ticket for Paris for Gail. Goodbye, Brailing. Jed? to see what we can do about that. Mm. Mm. 
you're telling me that stuff, marionettes, robots, whatever, is really going to happen at some time in the future? The illustrations are what they are. I just carry them. How long have you been you know, like this? I scarce remember a time before. It began with the arguments. I, I don't follow. Carnival life's hard. It's a closed world, claustrophobic, suffocating. I married out of familiarity and boredom. It seemed right. I couldn't have been more wrong. We fought. I drank. I got fired. I needed something to help me hold down a job. A, a gimmick? I heard about a certain tattoo artist. Knew the trade, they said. Out in the country. Down a certain dirt road. Turned right at the river, then left. It was easier than that. I heard it that first day. I hear it still. The insistent mosquito buzz of the needle. I followed it till I saw the signboard. Skin illustration. Illustration. Artistic. On across yellow meadows crisp from the sun. Towards an old shack that looked like it had stood in a million rains. The artist? Look for yourself. It's there among the illustrations on the small of my back, where I can't easily see it, but where I can always feel the humming, stinging needle making its pictures. I see the shack. The door's open. She's inside. She? An ancient woman, sitting in the center of a bare room. Come in. A little old witch who looked a thousand years one minute and twenty the next. Come in, man. Her eyes stitched with red resin thread. Her nose and ears sewn up. What are you waiting for? All her senses shut down and sewn tight into whispers and silences. Well, you came for the pictures. First, I have a picture to show you. Here, on my palm. My God, it's me. Me on your hand. It's been there 50 years. It's an old tattoo. Well, how can that be? I, I don't know you. you. You don't know me. Oh, but I do. I've been waiting for you. A hundred years. Maybe more, maybe less. Does it matter? You have come. How do you know it's me? Your eyes are so shut. You can't see. I feel you. I know every inch of your skin and the pictures that I'm yearning to live there. Unbutton your shirt. I... Don't be afraid. You need me. My needles are as clean as a doctor's fingers. Come on. I've illustrated so many, but none with the pictures I will give you. They will be special. Unique. You will be the only real illustrated man in the universe. You promise me that? Oh, yes. I have traveled through time. I know the deep past, the clear present, and the even deeper future. And it is that future that I will picture on your skin. Prophetic pictures you will never forget. <sighs> By morning, I looked like I'd fallen into a 20-color printing press. I walked out of that shack into what has been the life from hell. Well, I've never seen anything like them, the illustrations. But imagine the burden, carrying all these lives around on your body, day in, day out. Never knowing what futures people will see there when they look on my skin. This illustration, this is the future? Looks more like the past. English country village in some old Hollywood movie. An idyllic enough setting, but at a time yet to come. Good morning, Mr. and Mrs. Morris. It's 8.30 on August 22nd, and it's breakfast time. Coffee's ready. Mama, Dad. Mink, what's the hurry? The others are waiting for me. <laughs> it's school holidays. Why the rush? The game. Game? 
We're all playing it. You're telling me. Every time I look out the window, all I see is kids yelling to one another, running this way and that, and flying around in circles like there's no tomorrow. So, what is this game? The most exciting game ever. Well, it can wait till after breakfast. I'm not hungry. See you later. Hey, Ink. Kids. Still, ought to be glad, I suppose. They aren't making their own fun. Instead of relying on all those damned gadgets and gizmos we pay to have installed in the playroom. No happy life home is complete without one. <laughs> True. Right, Jill's given me a list of things we need. I can get some. Can you get these, Anna? OK. We've got to hurry and get it all put together before it's too late. Mink, can my brother Joey play? No. Well, why not? You know why, Anna, he's too old. He's only ten. Yes, and he'd make fun of us. He wouldn't. Honest, I'd tell him not to. Jill said no older kids, cos they'll go and spoil the game. Now let's get going. It's 11 o'clock. Your coffee will be served in the relaxation zone. Ink, what now? Just looking for stuff. Do you have to wreck the kitchen? It's important. For what? The game. Of course, the game. All right, if I take these things? Well, yes, but I suppose so. Great. But don't dent them. I won't. Mink. Yes. What's the name of this game? Invasion. Mm. Jill says we've got to start putting together the the apparat apparatus. Is that what this is? Yes. Now just hold that while I fix this on. What about this? That goes on next. Like this. Okay. Do you think this will work? Yes. Jill says we're doing really well. Oh. The time is one o'clock. Time for lunch, Mrs. Morris. Here's your milk. Time for Thanks. lunch. Mink. There's no need to gulp it. The soup isn't ready yet. I don't need any soup. You missed breakfast. You'll eat lunch. Lunch is served. Now eat. OK. <clears throat> Slow down. I've got to get on with the game. You make it sound like it's a matter of life and death. It is. <laughs> drill set. Who's Drill? You don't know him. What an odd name. Is he new in the neighbourhood? He's new, all right. Well, where's he from? Around. Who's his family? You wouldn't know them. But I like to know your friends. OK. OK. What's the matter, Mink? Is Drill shy? Yes. No, in a way. I've got to go. Why? Oh, Mink, have you borrowed the Electro Duster Magnet? Yes, but I'll bring it back. Be sure you do. Mrs. Morris, your sister is calling on the audio visor. Helen. Hi, sis. How's New York? Oh, same as ever. Big, frantic, exhausting. I wouldn't stay a minute longer than necessary if it weren't for Henry's job. You OK, Helen? You look tired. Oh, it's just the children. Underfoot, you know. Tell me, my mink as well. All the children around here seem to have got hung up on some crazy new game called Invasion. Oh, but your kid's playing that too. My Tim's got a crush on some kid named... Oh, Drill, I think it was. That's weird. Mink keeps going on about that name. Hmm, must be some sort of password. Yes. Don't know about your place, our front garden's a tip. Piles of junk and stuff. Oh, same here. And Henry's mother down in Florida said their whole neighbourhood's turning into a scrapyard. I mean, how did these games spread all over like that? That's social media for you. Yeah. Anyway, I didn't ring to chat about the crazy world of kids. I need that recipe for that black and white cake you make. The time is 2 o'clock and the latest news and weather updates are on your personal receiver, Mrs. Morris. Hey, that's your father's toolbox. I just need a couple of things. I'll bring them back. I was talking to Auntie Helen. She says Tim and his friends are playing this game of yours. I told you, all the kids are playing it. Mink, this invasion, who's invading what exactly? Martians invading Earth. Oh, it's just the good old Martians, is it? Well, not exactly Martians. They're, I don't know, from somewhere up. <laughs> and inside your funny little head. 
Jill says grown-ups are always laughing at kids because they've forgotten what it's like to be young. When I was your age, I used to like stories about Martians and space monsters. I'm not really sure if Jill's from Mars. Maybe Jupiter or Saturn or Venus. Anyway, he's had a hard time. <laughs> well, it's not easy being a Martian on Earth or a Venusian come to that. The thing is, they couldn't figure out a way to attack Earth. They've been a hundred movies where they had that trouble. He says if you're going to win, you have to have the element of surprise. Sounds like good tactics. And you have to have help from the enemy. Fifth columnists, they were called in the old days. But they couldn't work out how to do it. And then they did. Oh, and what was that? They decided to use something grown-ups never notice. Which is? Us, children. Ah, of course. And why does Drill want to invade us? Something to do with stuff we did in space. Your drill's been reading too many old history books and a bit too much science fiction. Anyway, it's all about dimensions, I think it was. Dimensions? Yes, four of them, and something about kids under nine and their imagination. Well, I'll tell you something that's not imagination. If you want to have your invasion before bath time, you'd better scoot. After it's over, Jill says we won't have to have any more baths and we'll be able to stay up till ten o'clock and watch all the televisor shows we want. Oh, he does, does he? They're going to let us run the world. <laughs> the grown-ups may have something to say about that. That's why they'll all be killed. <laughs> does that include your father and I, may I ask? I'll make sure you and Dad are not hurt too much. Well, thanks a lot, Mink. The time is 3.45 and Mr Morris is home. Good afternoon, Mr Morris. What are you looking at, Maggie? Oh, hello, Doug. Just watching Mink and the kids. We're still playing their game. I called out when I came up the path, but Mink was so wrapped up in whatever it is that she didn't seem to hear. It's called Invasion. <laughs> Some new televisor show. No, I don't think so. Doug. What? Nothing. Oh, come on. When you say nothing, it's always something. How many years since the space wars? Sixty? Seventy? Yeah, something like that. Right. And before that, back in the old days, in our great-great-grandparents' time, when there were people still alive who'd fought in the old world wars, and there were still lots of smaller wars going on all over the place, people worried about invasions. Well, but not anymore, thank God. They finally got together and fixed all that stuff. Exactly. So why now? All of a sudden, are the kids playing a game about an invasion? Why on earth would they come up with such an idea? Now what? I will do it. I just don't want anything to happen to my parents. What's going on? Mink won't let me play anymore. Why not? She's getting too old to play. Well, she's the same age she was an hour ago. Mink, did you hit Anna? No, I didn't. It was Drill. She's a scaredy cat and a crybaby. Drill said... Anna, you'd better go home. Drill said you were dangerous. He said you'd try to stop us. And you're coming inside, young lady. No! You can't make me. Don't speak to your mother like that. You'll say sorry right now. Sorry. I can't stop now. Drill's got stuck halfway and it's almost time. Zero hours, five o'clock. You and your stupid game. Well, my zero hour is six o'clock, and that, Mink, means you indoors and ready for your bath. Now, you heard what your mother said, Mink. Just try and not get into any more scrapes today, OK? Yeah, OK. The time is five o'clock. Time for a cocktail. The usual, Mr Morris, Mrs Morris. I don't want to drink tonight. I'm too strung up. She's just a kid being a kid. We were just the same. Were we? <laughs> All children hate their parents and wish they were dead. I'm not sure it's Mink who wishes us dead. Oh, for pity's sake, Maggie. Listen. What? I can't hear anything. That's what's wrong. The children. What about them? You can't hear them. The first time in days. Doug, you saw them playing. They haven't anything dangerous out there, have they? We're just kids playing with a load of junk. Well, what's making that noise? What are they up to, Doug? All right, all right, I'll go and see. Yes, and tell them to stop it! What the hell? Quick! Maggie! 
Where are you going? Amongst us, son, even now, long before the end comes, they're here, ready and waiting, just biding their time. That to two which was the proof. You really believe she came from the future? The future or some filthy, God-deserted alien planet? How else could she know these stories she painted on me? How the hell else could she make them come to life and speak to anyone who happens to merely glimpse my flesh? And why would she do that? Why burden me? God knows. Some crazy cosmic joke. Turn me into an illustrated prophecy that no one's ever gonna believe. All I know is she ruined my life. Worse, ruined the lives of everyone I've ever met from the day she inked my skin through to my meeting you. Hey, and I'm fine. Sure you are, kid. Just so long as you don't look at that one picture. What picture? <laughs> Even before you know anything about it, you want to see it. Right shoulder blade. You see? No, nothing. Just a blank space. Bare skin, more or less. Yeah, more or less. No special design, but if you keep looking, you'll begin to see something. A sort of jumble of colors. Yes? Or well, maybe. So what does it mean? She told me. This last illustration is a special one, but it is not quite finished. Because it is not quite finished. I put the ink on your flesh, but it's your sweat and your thoughts that will complete it. They do. Time after time, the muddle resolves itself. The confusion becomes clear and a picture forms, though never the same. What makes it change? Anyone whom I happen to be around. I don't believe you. Believe what you like, boy. All I'll say is that whenever I'm with a person long enough, and it doesn't take long, the picture comes into focus. They look there on my shoulder blade, and a picture forms that will show them how they'll live, how they'll die. Sure. Whatever you say, I guess. You can humor me all you like. Just take your mind off that picture that ain't there yet. Look at another, maybe less dangerous story. Though death's never far away. Look here. On my chest, right there. What do you see? Uh, a night sky? Yes. Empty space. Stars and blackness. Deep, deep. And? That's all. No. A, a rocket. A tiny rocket. Something hurtling towards it. A great ball of fire. They're gonna collide. Their 
ship a million pieces. A dozen shipwrecked astronauts swimming in the blackness like silverfish. Holly! Stone, this is Hollis. Oh, what happened? Some big chunk of space knocked us for six. Result? The rocket blows up. It happens. It happened. Sure as hell did. Where are you, Stone? I don't know. Oh, good God, how can I? Which way is up? All I know is I'm falling. We're all falling. Like pebbles down a well. Like what? Nothing, nothing. If we can find each other. Hello? Down, Stimson. Stone, so we find each other, supposing we could. Then what? We haven't got our force units on. Yeah, right, like we had enough time. Which is why we're not ever going to find each other. We have to. Do you hear me? We, we have to. We're not a crew anymore. We're just small bits of something falling into nothingness. Yeah, right. Hollis? Yep. How long can we talk like this? Well, it depends how fast you're going your way and I'm going mine. An hour? That should do it, maybe less. Which way are you going? Looks like I'll hit the moon. Well, that's Earth for me. Back to old Mother Earth at 10,000 miles per hour. I'll burn like a match. Give it a rest. Sounds like listening to the last act of Romeo and Juliet. Why are you such a jerk, Applegate? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! Right, the again. If it comes to jerks, Hollis, I'd say that idiot Stimson had the edge on me any day. Such a long way down. Such a long, long way. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. Stimson. Oh god, I don't like it. I don't, I don't like it. Stimson, this is Hollis. Stimson, do you hear me? Stimson. Stimson, take it easy. We're all in the same fix. I don't want to be here. Do you hear me? I don't want to be here. I want to be somewhere else. There is a chance we'll be found. That's crap, Hollis, and you know it. Listen to me, Stimson. They will find us, won't they? They must. I don't believe this is happening. I don't believe it. Hey, don't worry, Stimson. It's all just a bad dream. Shut up, Applegate. Stimson, listen. <laughs> You want me to shut up, Hollis? Come and shut me up! <laughs> You've wanted to shut me up ever since we started on this voyage, haven't you, Hollis? Huh? And now, guess what? It's too damn late. <laughs> right? On both counts, Applegate. Why don't you two quit scrapping? What the hell's the point now? Where's the fun in that, Stone? Oh, my God, no! <laughs> Not again. We'll all go mad before we die if you keep going at He's near me. Please. He's near me. I think I can reach him. Some Stimson. Stimson! No, please. shut him Okay, up. I've got him. No. Thank God for that. What did you do? I punched a hole in his helmet. <laughs> Bullseye! Oh my God, Hollis. Well, that makes no odds. A late demonstration of leadership from Hollis. Pity you never made captain. He was going to die anyway. The moon, the earth, meteors. Why wait? That's true. Anyway, now that we've had an over and out from Stimson, let's talk, Hollis. What's the point? Why not? Nothing else to do. So, where were we? Oh, yes. We were talking about your dislike for me. Or maybe hatred is a better word. Don't let him needle you, Hollis. It's okay, Stone. I want to tell you something, Hollis, and Stone, and anyone else who's still listening. Something to justify your hatred of me. Want to hear? I don't give a damn. Sure you do. Well, listen up. I was the one who blackballed you with the rocket company five years ago. <laughs> your whole life you wanted to get to the top, and you've always wondered why you didn't. Well... Now you know. I put the black mark on you just before I was kicked out myself. Oh, you bastard, Applegate. <laughs> we both wind up with a crew of mercenaries on a mission to put down a Martian revolt. But there's one difference between us, Hollis. I got to be a lieutenant and your superior. 
<laughs> you angry, Hollis? No. Damn. Okay, I'll try a bit harder. Let me tell you why I did what I did. What's the point in this? The point, Stone, is that Hollis, like all of us, is about to die. And he might as well do so, having learned the only useful lesson in his miserable existence. I did it because you're weak, Hollis. You had ambitions, but you didn't have what it takes to realize them. You're right. I guess I cared too much about being liked, when the truth was, I didn't have the balls to be ruthless like you. Well, you've nailed me, Applegate, and I probably deserve it. You don't need to justify yourself to him, Hollis. Well, might as well. It's as good a time as any for facing facts. And here's a fact for you, Applegate. For the first time ever, I'm not jealous of you anymore. <laughs> I used to be so damn jealous of you. Getting whatever you wanted, however you could grab it. Rank, money, relationships. But now, everything's over for you. Just like it is for me. Bravo for fighting back, but guess what? I've still got all those memories of everything I've had and done. What have you got, Hollis? How does a measly heap of broken dreams stack up to my memories? Huh? Well, your precious memory's gonna stop you falling now. Take it easy, Hollis. Well, tell me. Ah! What happened? <sighs> Hollis? <sighs> What's going on? Hollis! I've been hit. My leg. The, the ship was something. Blood. The suit's leaking. Feel the suit, you fool. Uh, Twist the lock by the knee now. Uh, For God's sake, Hollis, do it now. Uh, do you hear? Yeah. It's okay. Okay. Oh, God Almighty. What's uh, worse? Falling for eternity or getting cut up bit by bit by space like an invisible bloody butcher? Have you done it, Hollis? Yeah. Thanks. I didn't know you cared so much. <laughs> Yeah, well, love's a wonderful thing. Hollis? Yes? This isn't good. <laughs> what in particular? Arguing, hating. Brings all the bile out, makes us bad. It's a bad way to die. Don't you think? <sighs> you listening, Hollis? Yes. I lied. I didn't blackball you. Don't know why I said that. Let me guess, Applegate, because you're just a nasty piece of work. Got it in one, Stone. Hollis, listen. Truth is, we were both shafted by that bloody android on the crew. Two careers ruined by a robot. <laughs> I said what I did because I wanted to hurt someone and you seemed like the best candidate. You were the one everyone liked. You were okay being you, whereas I wasn't happy unless I was trying to be what I wasn't. That's why we fought. But now... Well, you might as well know I've been an idiot. There's not one ounce of truth to what I said. <laughs> so there you are. How the hell with you? Thanks, Applegate. You don't mention it. Up your nose, you bastard. Hey. Stone, what's happening? I've got myself into a meteor swarm. Hundreds of little asteroids. Meteors? Yeah. I think it's the Mimidni cluster that goes out past Mars and in towards Earth once every five years. Good timing, Stone. Well, I'm right in the middle. It's like a big kaleidoscope. There's all kinds of colors and shapes and sizes. <laughs> oh, God, it's beautiful. Stone? <laughs> They're taking me with them. I'm going with them. <laughs> I love all this. I love. Still. Yes. Good luck. Don't be funny. So how you doing, Hollis? I'm still heading back to Earth. You're on your own. I'm bound for the moon, and no mistake. I'll... Take it easy. Just me now, hurtling towards where it all began, where it'll all end. Applegate, you were right. As a life lived, it seems pretty empty. Too late now. 
no feelings left, just an ache, and a wish that there was some last thing I could do, some last good thing. When I hit the atmosphere, I'll blaze like a meteor. Oh, God. I wonder if anyone will see me. <sighs> What's happening? The picture's changed. A country lake at evening? Uh, yes, uh, a man and a boy. Fishing. No fish biting. The boy looks up, gazing into the sky. Yes. And he sees it. Something falling. Someone. He points. And seeing what he thinks is a falling star, he makes a wish and gives a falling man his longed-for legacy. What did he wish? To go into space, like poor Hollis, whose burning cinder of a body he mistook for a wishing star. Does it come true, his wish? Maybe. Perhaps he'll fly to the moon, lead an expedition to Mars. Who knows? Only that witch who put the story there can answer that question. Did you ever see her again? Did I, hell. Every summer for 50 years, I've hunted for that shack of hers. One day I'll find her, and when I do, I will kill her. Would that stop it? Possibly. I might sleep a little better. It's hard to rest with the pictures crawling like ants in my skin. With that space in my back, that one small gap among the clutter of rocket ships and time machines, waiting to cloud over and fill in some new, deadly picture... It's just ink. How can it be deadly, whatever it shows? You really want to look, don't you, boy? <laughs> no. Yes. Oh, Christ, I don't know. You're just itching to take a look, make sense of that jumble, put the jigsaw together, see the last illustration, hear the final story. Yeah, well, maybe I am. I'm telling you, you've seen enough. But you're like all the rest. No one's ever seen enough. Turn around. Let me see. <sighs> Okay, you can't resist, and I can't stop you. The shapes are shifting, changing. They will. Dissolving into one another. They do. A face. Oh, no. <gasps> Your face? Yes. But you're not alone, are you? No. I'm there, too. A drawing on my own body. Oh, my God. Oh, tell me, what am I doing? Advancing. Reaching out with your hands. Hands full of drawings, monsters, madman murderers, and a single rose. Yes. Turn away. Fingers from my throat. No. Close it. Run, boy. Tighten it. Run. Now. Hey, you looking for a ride? No one should be out on a night like this. Come on, get in. <clears throat> Hell of a night to be hitching a ride, man. It's like the wrath of God out there. Well, looks like you're eager to get somewhere, or get away from somewhere, perhaps. I'm, I'm heading east, if that's any good to you. It's got to be a long night if you're observing a vow of silence. Say, man, are you okay? You look kind of shaken up. Smoke? Hmm. Help yourself, go on. Well, gee, what the hell have you got in your hand there? Wait, show me. Wow, a rose. Yeah, freshly cut. It's even got the drops of dew. Nestling among soft pink petals. That's beautiful. Just uh, an illustration. Oh, that's the best tattoo I've ever seen. One of many. Where'd you get them? Be sorry you asked. <laughs> 
Why is that? It's just how it is. Everyone's always sorry. Sooner or later. In The Illustrated Man by Ray Bradbury, The Illustrated Man was played by Ian Glenn, The Youth by Jamie Parker, The Tattoo Witch by Elaine Claxton, and The Driver by Wilf Scolding. Smith was played by Stephen Hogan, Brailing and Brailing Two by Patrick Kennedy, Mink by Nell Heron, Mother by Heather Craney, Father by Clive Hayward, and Anna by Lucy Hutchinson. Stone was played by Jamie Barbakoff, Hollis by Alec Newman, Applegate by John P. Arnold, and Stimson by Craig Ells. The Illustrated Man was dramatized by Brian Sibley and directed by Gemma Jenkins.